It starts with one. For you, I don't know if you saw the big news yesterday in Big League Baseball, but the Baltimore Orioles are about to get new owners. Now, I don't know which rich guy. Billy's got their names. They're coming up and trending. If the names matter, Billy's on them in 15 minutes from now, right? But the Angelos family paid in about 1993... $173 million for, and I will use the Robert Kraft line, for the asset that is the Baltimore Orioles. Yesterday, they agreed to sell the team for $1.72 billion. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a hell of a markup. Now, here's the scary thing, because we were looking at this before the show. The Orioles, on like a 100-win team, only drew about 23,000 people per game to Camden Yards, which is kind of amazing. So they're really good now. They've been drafting and developing. They now have owners who would be willing to spend money in a ballpark that isn't filled. We now have a real challenger in the fray to join everything else that goes on in the American League East. And it's different than Tampa. Tampa has proven they don't need to spend money. They have a they have the Rays way. We just come off the Patriot way. <laughs> yeah. They have the Rays way. But otherwise, the other teams in the division spend money minus Baltimore. Rut row. Now we got a problem. So a bunch of billionaires are coming in to buy the Orioles. And a part of the reason this is important is because if you're John Henry. I brought this up on uh, one of the days you were out on holiday, Fourier, and I know you heard it and you texted me right away and said, oh, it makes sense. John Henry and crew played, paid what? About $700 million for the Red Sox? If the Orioles are flipping at one seven, don't you think the Red Sox can flip at, oh, about $3.5 billion? Mm. <laughs> and you need some cash. I smell well, Okay, so... Tell me why they would sell because uh, a big giant. Okay, good. Because I'm curious because um, let's make it make sense before we just, you know, throw uh, throw mud at them. Well, us, there is, well, but there is also the three billion investment led by the oh. Fenway Sports Group into the PGA they need, Tour. They need cash. That is, well, again, do they need it? Let's not act like the Red Sox have not made money. They have. Uh, to the point to where we really don't know how much money the Red Sox make in terms of profit. They were at $2.6 in terms of fans last year. And really, the thing that we don't know is how much do they make from their just trash network? you got to figure it's gobs of money. The other day on a sat, th this lets you know the Nesson programming grid, right? It's the Bruins and the Red Sox and then... I think on a Saturday afternoon, I'm zapping through the guide. They are on the British Basketball League. British Basketball League. That's real high-end stuff right there. I mean, I ripped them for putting on Charlie Moore, for God's sakes. Let alone a basketball league from Britain? What? Doesn't make sense. They'll put whatever on there. But that's the thing, Christian. That thing's a cash cow. Uh, and why would the Red Sox, why would they sell? Well, number one, uh, a valuation of five off of what you spent. You're turning $750 million into what I think could be three and a half billion. There's that number one. Number two, they own all of the space around Fenway Park. So, you know, all that area that it built up and all the passive income that'll come in through that, they don't have to sell all that. They can keep that. Hell, they can just sell the Red Sox, keep nesting if they want to. They could really set this thing up a couple different ways to be able to maximize money. And the guy in Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp, I don't know if the guy's the Bill Belichick of soccer or whatever, but even when that guy left Liverpool, he was like, yeah, we've had some ups and downs, but I'm glad I was the, you know, the manager or whatever they call that head coach in soccer over there. <laughs> so you look at this investment, and again, it's from the Fenway Sports Group. It's all under the Fenway Sports Group umbrella. And here's really the key, Christian, to me, and I know I'm kind of going on on this. It's the these two guys that are coming in to buy it, they're venture capitalists. 
All these sports leagues have now said the real money is in these stacks of venture capitalist people. So if two work their way in the door in Baltimore, why should we not think that more are trying to knock on the door? And John Henry, as he gets older, there's no natural for him to, to hand it to. With all due respect to his wife, I don't know if John Henry looks at it and goes, boy, my wife will love running this franchise once I'm no longer roaming Earth. I don't think that at all. So, the, listen, the, the only people who can own and purchase any of these pro teams are venture capitalists, hedge fund managers, guys with just oodles and oodles. We're talking uh, they manage a trillion dollars. Or somebody who was like an executive, like a Balmer, who has $20 billion in net worth, and they do it on their yeah, own. And yeah, and it's just yeah. straight cash, homie. I'm going to pay Bingo, cash for yeah. it. Who do I write the check out to? Right. I think Balmer's like building that Clippers yeah, no, he is. arena with just cash. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's 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 just, it's so rare. So and cash, then, homie. And then you have to have the right amount of passion for it. Either you have a passion because you've always been a fan and you've always wanted to win a, uh, to win a championship of some kind because you've already kind of crossed off, uh, you know, uh, you know, every box that you've wanted to do in your lifetime. Now you're leaning towards your 60. Now you want this. I, I listen. You are on this. There's something There's here. Something it doesn't up. smell be. right. Mm -hmm. And I use the word of the year, which is always gaslighting. And I go back to Sam Kennedy calling everybody liars. I go back to the admitting that they're not spending, not signing anybody. It's almost like they're trying to prove to a potential buyer, hey, you don't have a lot of debt. This is a good deal for you. There you go. Um, and uh, it's right for you to spend cash. You could come in right away because the salary cap is this. And so it's perfect for you. It just feels like they're doing their own version of nesting. Right, they're just getting all their Ooh, ducks in a row. I like that. They're making sure everything's tied up. You know, they're you know, Core's on his last year of his deal. They bring in Breslow to kind of fix things, even though like they couldn't. Like, there's so many other people turned down the job. Well, that's the thing. Now we sort of know the dirty underbelly. Like these people were getting under the hood, and they must not have liked or heard of what was coming out of the mouths. Of yes, Red Sox exactly. Ownership. Hey, we're not spending. As a matter of fact, we're just going to spend less. When you want me to build a championship team, well, we want you to take the young guys that we've already drafted and develop them. That's what you do, right? By by the way, you signed off on none of them. However, yeah. you know you you're we're responsible hand for you now. Himes crew and uh, god bless you go find i can't a way to even win. imagine like you said this the red sox the franchise the red sox franchise has got to be one of the most desirable as far as like status symbols a billionaire can have right i want to buy a yacht oh, i'm going to buy this priceless piece of art right i'm going to buy an island in the middle of nowhere i want to own the red sox why i don't know seems kind of cool i don't know if i can do the math on this quickly on my uh on my calculator here but let's just go 2.6 million people okay times because i just threw into the google machine boston red sox average ticket price okay okay uh they have it as uh average price per game during the 24 season right there, right there, around 155 dollars and 20 cents okay so let's just say the average ticket price is 150 bucks over a billion, two hundred <laughs> trillion, two hundred billion dollars. That's three hundred. <laughs> so if it's two point six million times one fifty average, and that might be high. Yeah, yeah. Three hundred ninety million just in tickets. No food, no drink, no parking, mm -hmm. no merchandise, no nothing. So one could probably make the argument that this is a cash cow for John Henry, but when you also try to jack up your valuation. And try to get the most out of the, we'll use it again, asset. It's not a team. It's an asset to these guys. Then you're trying to show as much black ink on the page as you possibly can. And there's a big story to be told there. If John Henry, if John Henry thinks he can get $4 billion for the Red Sox and he paid seven fifty, dollars how can he not sell? Like, I'm, I'm with you. And, and there's the, it just seems like. You know, we can look at the whole winter weekend as John Henry's, uh, you know, he has something, you know, already planned, which is total bull crap because, yeah. you know, this is on the calendar forever. Why would you schedule something else on this date? You can't move it. Move the other thing, right? Unless you're like your daughter's getting married or you're whatever. And even then I'd say, you got to change the date. 
I, I got to go face the music with all these Red Sox fans, well, you know? I, and, and it's very evident that I don't think John Henry wants to deal with that part of it anymore. We had a texter who said the Penguins aren't signing anyone. That that manager just ended up leaving Liverpool. I don't know if all the sports assets would get lumped in. I don't think they're at that point. But the one that is the most mature, let's say, as a business, and if we are going to be fair to John Henry, before World Championships under his ownership, like, we can't ignore that. I know. It's, okay. So for him, for okay, him, kind of been there, done that. Exactly. We do something else. How about this from Ken Rosenthal? So, uh, Ken Rosenthal, at times, of Fox Sports is he's one of these insiders. So, you know, he might be all over the map at times. But I thought a couple of weeks ago, Rosenthal was kind of like, oh, you know, the Red Sox are still looking around, da da da. Now, pff, that's changed. Are they trying? Because they, no. they let Justin Turner. They're not. Okay. Let's face it, they're the Boston Red Sox, okay? They don't have this regional sports network problem. They own Nesson. They are a team that should be, as their chairman Tom Werner said earlier this offseason, they should be full throttle. They've got Jordan Montgomery sitting in Boston, working out in Boston. His wife is doing a residency in Boston. He is right in front of them, and maybe they'll sign him, but it sure doesn't seem like they're going to do anything big. Sam Kennedy, their team president, said at their winter event that they probably, or he indicated they might be cutting payroll. It's inexplicable to me the way they're running this thing. Now, they have young talent coming. They've got some interesting pieces, even this year, that they're going to incorporate. But, again, it's the Boston Red Sox. Mm. Pretty tough to hear. Pretty tough to hear. And, and look, if you're John Henry, this all makes sense. Like, really? What you, part? If you, if what do you mean it makes no, sense? If you think about the possibility of selling and you're going to get a multiple of five or six based on what you spent and it was three quarters of a billion dollars and you won and you rehab Fenway Park, it makes sense for him to start to think, is it time for me to kind of exit stage left? You know, same thing with Tom Werner. Like he's got a lot of money. But say he got a billion of that sale price. I don't know what his exact skin in the game is. But if you're Tom Warner, like, you got dough. But if you're like, damn, I can get a billion dollars this late in life. And I don't have to answer questions from fans who want to choke me out. See, the Boston Red Sox really deserve an owner kind of like Jerry Jones. Obsessed with winning. Won't, will stop at nothing. Talks to the public, says some crazy things. It doesn't really matter. The dude just wants to win. And if he wins four, he's still not satisfied. He wants five. I, that is that is the type of owner this franchise needs. They don't need a passive owner that is just going to kind of come around when he feels like it, when it's comfortable and the water is warm and everyone's going to praise him. You know what? I don't even need an owner that's going to come in here and spend – $350 million on payroll. You know, I don't need Steve Cohen. But what I need to but what I need is to know that there's a smart business person in there who would be able to kind of blend the spending and the young players. Like I think there were some of us, and I was one, who thought, boy, this offseason might be interesting. You've got certain young players. How can you augment them a little bit and still have flexibility for young guys to come up? You know, Baltimore. Basically, Baltimore has a young team because the Angelos just didn't want to spend money. And that's what it feels like might be going on right here is that while the Red Sox do have a healthy payroll, it's not what we would expect. It's not showing aggressiveness. Uh, and I just wonder if this is kind of a higher version of the Angelos. Yeah, we're going to go young and we'll get our 2.5 million people and we'll be happy. We'll be fine. We'll make a couple of bucks, put it up for auction.